We don't even know what, like every day looked completely different. Yeah. So the process of that was difficult. Eventually we decided to have a small wedding and we ended up doing that. But it's like the hurdle, it was just one obstacle after another, after another. And then we get married or have the wedding and move in together. And it's, that's when everything unfolds. The move in. Yeah. That I nobody think, talks about. Yeah. Right? That's when that was the major shock factor for me. It was okay. like two different polar opposites yeah, coming together, coming together yeah. and then finding a way to navigate, to navigate yeah that was the hardest thing for me mm -hmm. it was like swallowing my pride yeah. hey everyone welcome back to the hey talks today i'm excited i have an amazing guest with me her name is Manera, and today we're going to talk about the transitional phases in life we all go through them um, but do we really have anyone there to walk us through it that's the question of the day so um, let's introduce Manira. Let's welcome her to the Khair Village and uh, stay tuned. So, who's the woman sitting in front of me today? Well, I am Manira, obviously. Um, I am a recently married woman. I just Newly got when? married. Okay, COVID baby. COVID married, okay. marriage baby, or whatever. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've been married for about, I think a year and a half right now. I dabble a little bit in YouTube here and there, just started when I got married. And yeah, I currently work from home and that's my life right now. That's your life right now. Yeah. You had a COVID wedding, yeah. COVID marriage, yeah. and you are a newlywed. All of that in COVID. All of that in COVID. If, as if we didn't have enough going on I with know, COVID, like... right? <laughs> so tell us who you used to be like, who was Manera maybe? 10, 15 years ago. Wow, 10, 15 years ago. It's a long time ago, right? I feel like that Manira, first of all, I was, I lived in Kenya. I didn't even live. Okay. Like I got shipped, I was those. Uh, Don't tell me you was on a boat. Yeah, <laughs> I was one of those kids that got shipped to Africa. So I was okay. there for, I think about five, six years. And I don't know, like I've always been an outgoing child, very athletic, very just, very friendly okay just all about people i honestly think i to a degree i was very naive as well yeah for sure yeah i was Weren't definitely we all? yeah mm -hmm. i really was looking back now i'm like yeah. yeah i really was like if i had known what life had in store for you yeah yeah, yeah. you would have buckled up right? i would have buckled up exactly so yeah so i've just been that so you you're a little canadian kid right mm. were you born in canada born and raised yeah okay born and raised in toronto mm -hmm. yeah born and raised in toronto okay, exactly toronto and then you moved to kenya yeah. what a transition right yeah. So the transitional phases of life is already hard as it is. Yeah. How was that as a kid? Like, w was that exciting for you? Was it a time of like stress? Were you like, why am I leaving? It was trauma. Yeah. Uh, Cause like I. That was your first trauma. That in life. really was when you think about it, because I never knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, my dad just said, "Oh, we're moving to Kenya. I built us a house there." First, he said, "He said, oh, we're gonna stay there for three months." And Not the three months. Yeah. Story. If you don't like it, you can come back. Okay. First month there, I'm already getting enrolled oh, in yeah. school. You ain't going nowhere. So yeah, I was already traumatized because I feel like the perception I had of yeah. Africa was just, you know, what you see on TV, and I thought that's exactly what I was going to. And mm -hmm. so yeah, I was traumatized. I'm not gonna lie to you, but um, and looking back now, I wish if I knew what Africa was gonna be like, and like how I, I never realized how much I enjoyed myself until I came back. Yeah. Because I kept like wanting to go back, glamorizing the life that I had here that really wasn't all that. When yeah. I came back, I'm just like, everybody's just really, I don't know, like nothing. I, I, I don't know why organic, I thought so right? much has changed yeah. while I was there. And I mm -hmm. thought I was missing out on so much. And then I come back and I'm like, wow, like yeah. nothing, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but yeah, the transition was a lot. Just getting used to the language, the culture, the people. Just being in a third world country on its own was already a lot. So yeah, it definitely was an experience though, for sure. And then being taken away from what you just got used to now, because you have friends mm -hmm. and you, you understood the situation and the neighborhood. And, and me being that child was just, I was all about friends. Yeah. Yeah. So Social it was, little yeah. butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then now the butterfly has to leave. Yeah. So now you're going, coming back to Canada, mm -hmm. single girl. Um, how was that like? Is, do you feel like people were pressuring you to get married at a certain age? You know what's funny? I don't think anybody pressured me per se. Like, alhamdulillah, I never had pressure from my family. Nice. I, I don't think my parents were, my dad was just all about school. Yeah. Like, get your school, go to school. Like, because me and my sister were the oldest. And I remember he would always drill in our minds, like, you guys are girls, gabdati, yeah. whatever. Like, I want you, when you get married, to like, not be so dependent. I want you Good. to be able to like, have your own finances, your own, you know what I mean? Yeah, Anything could happen. So smart, yeah. So that's what was drilled in our minds. So I don't think I got pressure from that side. 
the funny thing is, I feel like the pressure came from me. Okay. I feel like I had Not a the self pressure. Yeah, honestly, okay. I had a like I pictured my life from a young age. Like at this age, I'm gonna do this, and at that age, I'm gonna do this. So when those things didn't happen, I feel like I punished myself. Wow. Yeah, honestly, it's you crazy. are a first. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get married by 23 because my mom had me when she was 23. Why? You're like, why am I gonna not do that? Like I was adamant wow. on that. Like, wallahi, I was you had so a vision adamant. board and everything. Ooh, a mental vision board. Mental vision board. <laughs> <laughs> that was stuck. Yeah. Okay. So that stuck with me, and mm. um, 23 came, and then nothing, and, and then 25 came. came, and I'm like. Oh. Yeah. I think when I hit 25, that's when I was just like... <laughs> Midlife crisis. That's literally. <laughs> that's when I was like, that's I'm like, it. wait, something's wrong in this calculation. Yeah. No, it's not happening for okay. me. And I, it's crazy how much, like, my whole life just revolved around... Well... Yeah, I want to get married. I want to do that. And I'm going to finish school by then. Actually, start started off with the school. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like when I came here, because of the path that I took, I had to go back and take credits yeah. for high school. That took a while, yeah. Exactly, and then that took away from t you know the time that I would have done school. Yeah. So by the time I graduate, it's not gonna be like you know the time you I wanted. One hell of a calculator. That, I realized that I that in itself was completely toxic because I feel like for so long I was living in those shackles. I yeah. guess my own shackles, yeah. nobody else's. Okay, but where where did that come from though for you? Like where did it stem from? I I, I can't. Do you feel like you saw other people getting married and stuff, and then like you're like, okay, if they're doing it, like I should do it? No, but I, maybe it's because I had this like idea that this is how life, this is how life, like should how go. life evolves. Yeah. Okay. You finish high school, you go to university. You finish university, four years, boom. Then next thing you know, you plan for a year or two, yeah. get married. Yeah. You get married, career. Like I just had that vision of what my like my life would be like that. That when it actually turned out to be completely the opposite. And honestly, another thing I realized is I'm such a control freak, yeah. and I'm really like realizing how toxic, from. yeah, mm -hmm. how toxic that is. And this is something till this day. Yeah, we're still trying to figure it I'm out. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to accept the fact that you know, Ilahi has my, yeah. like uh, Allah is the best of planners, and I can plan, but that's yeah. all in His hands, right? Yeah. So I think that till this day, that's something I struggle with. Mm -hmm. But it's just me trying to get a control of yeah. my life, and when things don't go out, go or work out my way, it's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's end all be all. It's yeah. completely just, yeah. Like, it's done deal? Completely. You know, I, I always tell people, like, the most beautiful part of evolving and growing is something called release. Yeah. Like, you know, we claim to actually follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We yeah. say he's the best of planners. But then walking in that tawakkul is very different. I love like that the, you say that. The, the reality of actually doing it and saying, okay, things are not looking the way that I thought it should mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. But then am I going to now panic over it yeah. or, like, control it? Yeah. Or... Should I just live my life organically and then just see the way that Allah has something planned for me? You know, like I love that. We one. have this anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not you, me. It's the whole world, right? Why? And I did that to myself. Yeah, to be we have to trust me. Allah, and then if you can trust Allah, you can trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And then if you trust yourself, then you can trust others. Yeah. You know, it's like it's a whole thing, and then you can trust you know the the way that your life pans out. Literally. At the end. Because look now, you're married, yeah. and everything worked out, yeah. but it didn't work out in your time. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's what's crazy. Yeah. If you asked me yeah. right now, like, would I have it any other way? Well, I wouldn't. Of course. But but then, like, when... On your timing, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. On Allah's timing, it worked. And it was driving me crazy. Like, I really tried so hard to make sure, it, and it didn't work. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, now I'm like, I, looking back, I would not have it any yeah. other way. Well, I, so I then here, here comes the preparation. Yeah. So you meet Mr. Wright. Mm -hmm. So tell us how... How you met Mr. Wright? What was your little cute little love story? Of we need to know. Oh my God! So, it's so funny because you know when people tell you expect the unexpected. Yeah, that's it. Wallahi. Marriage hits you when you least expect it. Have you noticed? Wallahi, it is yeah. one hundred percent facts. Facts. I w it was at a point where I just so I lived in Somalia for a year. Okay. Um, in twenty eighteen, and um, so it was just, the way it even happened was just completely random. So okay. finished college, and I was like, oh, there's a job opportunity. Um, first, we went to Kenya for a vacation, mm -hmm. and then ended up in Kismayo. Okay, wow. Just totally random. Another okay. culture shock. Another yeah. trauma. Yeah, a whole trauma. Yeah, <laughs> it's a the pattern. Shipments and the trumps. <laughs> it's just a pattern. It's just a pattern. So pattern. then I came back um, December 2019. Uh, no, sorry, 2018 okay. of December, and then I, the time. Well, I when I look back right now, like in that period of my life, I was not looking for merit. Like that yeah. was the yeah. least of my worries. Like that was, not, I was more concerned about my health and mm, other things mm. and just even finding a job because I feel like I genuinely enjoyed my stay in Somalia. I was working there for a little bit. Nice. And it was just, it gave me a perception of what I wanted yeah. for my life to look like, I guess, in mm -hmm. a sense. 
Um, and then I come back here and it's like I have to start from scratch. Yeah. And I think that kind of hit me really hard and I was yeah. going through a lot. So Marukha's like marriage was not even Just meeting people, even talking to time. people. Yeah. yeah. And then homeboy slides into my DMs. Like, How you doing? <laughs> yeah. And then um, it's my medical sister. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Talking to me like we knew each other. I got confused too. I'm like, <laughs> wait, hold on. Do, do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> well, I, I thought. The confidence. Yeah, well, I, super okay. confident. Very confident. Okay, let's give it up for my better one well, time. Well, I, Allah, very persistent. Hiya? Um, so we yeah, like we that. met that way, and then we just started talking, and then I think um. I just wasn't really like reciprocating. Mm -hmm. Then a couple weeks went by, and then I guess he responded to a story or I did or something like that. And then we just picked up from there, and it's just been ever since. So oh. that was like March of 2019. Nice. So ever since then, we've just been like, you know, talking. And alhamdulillah, it's just grew into what it is right now. <laughs> nice. Okay, so in the transitional phases, yeah. I feel like, as we said, people don't have the support that they need. Yeah. So your transitional phase from, okay, so now you guys de determine the fact that, okay, we're gonna get married. Yeah. We're gonna make this thing official. Mm -hmm. And then you start planning, and then what are the speed bumps that you guys have to go through in this process? Because people need to know, especially the people begin? that have not reach the place that you are in your life right now yeah. you're a newlywed so you can actually take us back and be like okay well yeah. this was the story and we want people to benefit you know so yeah. that they can be like oh my god Manir went through that mm -hmm. so I know what to expect you know where do I begin honestly like I feel like start from just the the process of you know him just um, not having his family around and having to figure all of that on his own. But I think to a degree though, he had a lot of friends that were married. So right, okay. he was that one friend in the circle that yeah. wasn't married. So he kind of had an idea of like how to go about things. But yeah. I feel like not having that support system to a degree also impacted it or us uh, rather. And then having the nikah, boom, literally the day, I think the day of our nikah, the following day, the whole country went on the complete lockdown. lockdown. March 15, oh my God. 2020. Oh yeah, my God. the whole world changed. So it, it, as if the wedding and the process of the whole, you know, marriage and everything wasn't difficult enough. And then now we have to like, you know, prepare for what's to come. We don't mm -hmm. even know what, like every day looked completely different. Yeah. So the process of that was difficult. Eventually we decided to have a small wedding and we ended up doing that, but it's like, the hurdle, it was just one obstacle after another, after another, and then we get married or have the wedding and move in together and it's, that's when everything unfolds. The move in yeah. that I nobody think, talks about, yeah, right? That's when everything hit us. And I think honestly, to a degree, 2020 and what happened also, yeah. like was something that we just never had time yeah. to, to process. Know, process, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that was another thing that we were dealing with. And then for me personally, it was just the move and just realizing I'm nowhere near my family, you're on your own now. Yeah, I'm not, like, exactly. Mm -hmm. They're, yeah, yes, they're a phone call away, but if anything happens, I can't go to them as yeah. quickly as I would, you know what I mean? Yeah. All of that just started hitting me, yeah. not leaving the house. So me being, like, a social butterfly yeah. and having friends and being out and just yeah, feeding off of that. butterflies indoors. Yeah. How are you going to fly indoors? Yeah. And I think, like, ex to a degree, though, when my husband and I were, when we started talking and stuff like that, I think my, like, me being a so social butterfly and stuff like that slowly, I don't know, I just... Started to become a homebody. I don't know if it's because of 2019 I was going through a lot. Okay. So that kind of changed a little bit and then pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And it just, I guess, eased or made it easier for me to just be a homebody. Yeah. And then now moving to Edmonton, it was like I had no choice but to be a homebody because I had yeah. nowhere to go. Yeah. No, like I didn't know where I was, no mm -hmm. friends, no people. Like it's just I was forced to yeah. be at home. Yeah. And I think that also had a huge impact impact on sure. just my personality, just me as a person mm -hmm. and just our marriage. It was when you're totally, isolated like yeah. that is when a lot of things are magnified, yeah. first of all. Wow. And then, so what keeps you, got, what kept you guys calm right before you got married? I feel like the, the crazy things that happen before mm -hmm. people get married is yeah. something that people don't talk about. Yeah. They just weather the storm. Mm -hmm. And then it's like one thing after another and then anxiety, anxiety, let's just deal with this family member, then let's deal with that. And yeah. then expectations from left and right. As a couple though, how do you stay firm in a, in such a chaotic time? Wow, I honestly like, well, I, now that I think about it, I honestly cannot tell you because if it was, my only answer is, Allah. Yeah. Because I cannot tell you like the amount of stuff that he was going through yeah. and just, you know, even the pandemic hitting and then, you know, now your job's getting a little shaky mm -hmm. and just finances and the weddings around the corner. And it was just pressure after pressure from both ends. Yeah. And then obviously him as a man, he's probably feeling like 
you know, um, every, even though nobody put any like actual pressure on him, like from our end, yeah. he put that on himself. Like I'm the man at the end of the day, they're expecting this from me. Like I need to do this down the third. And if I can't do it, then, you know, then what? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that was a lot. Well, I, I, there wasn't anything in particular that we did. Mm -hmm. I just believe that when Elahi is by your side, like, Somehow you get through Somehow things. Somehow you guys are gonna make it. Yeah. I, I can't really tell you exactly what we did to get through that, but we did. Like, do you feel like though? Because I feel like what what differentiates the couple that makes it mm -hmm. and the couples that fall through the cracks is the fact that they're committed. That's true. Because right. love mm -hmm. and commitment is two different things. You're absolutely right. Once someone can love you, and then maybe their commitment is a little bit shaky, and then yeah. it's like, mm, so it's like, are we right until the wheels fall off? Yeah, you're that type right. of person. It depends on like what's the grip on mm -hmm. this hand, on this handheld, right? Yeah. So if you guys are holding hands, then you guys can get through it. Mm -hmm to get to it, you Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. But then some people are not holding hands. Some mm -hmm. people, you know, other people kind of get in their ear and there's and the whole commotion behind the process of getting yeah. married, that really is telling. It shows you like the stamina behind your yeah. longevity of your relationship and who am I really in a relationship with, Absolutely. you know? So do you feel like you guys were, the commitment actually really was strong enough to get you guys through? Yeah, yeah, we were both serious though. Like from the moment we started talking that like, I feel like maybe a month in, we were having like hypothetical conversations about like what if we get married what would we do you know about this and that we were like from the beginning we already started talking about like you know marriage like mm -hmm. we weren't just talking to one another for the purpose. purpose of just like you yeah. know and i wasn't really into that anyways yeah. and same he was on the same boat as well so from the get that's that was already our plan mm -hmm. and then once we had our nikah i feel like the moment we had our nikah is when all the difficulty started and the pandemic literally hit like say that again people <laughs> don't get the fact that yeah. when you get married yeah they think it's like this blissful cute little exactly. let's go run off into the sunset <laughs> but really the sun yeah. is uh, setting exactly and you guys are gonna get in dark moments really fast <laughs> literally and then it's the survival of the yeah. fittest it really is who's well gonna done. survive this thing because mm -hmm. number one here comes shaitan yeah oh my god the moment you just got you just went you just did the halal yeah well, you just did what Allah, Allah the feels now, is permissible. Like, now yeah. it's, He's, let's get ready to yeah. rumble, mm -hmm. right? So the move in, what what, what shocked you? Because I know the shock, that's a whole nother trauma. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're still in the game with the person that you love. Mm -hmm. It's still your husband at the end of the day. He's, you know, nothing changes between yesterday when you guys were not married and then today mm -hmm. you're, it's just the same human being, obviously, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But now there's a journey that you guys have to go through. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a storm that you have to weather together. Mm -hmm. You're either going to learn how to dance in the rain yeah. or you're going to get out. You're right. So, right? Mm -hmm. So, what was the first, like, what was the first time where you were like, whoa, this is a problem? Like, you know? Oh, wow. Where do I begin? Honestly, I, for me, it was just like the living situation. Mm -hmm. I Again, there's a lot of things that I learned about myself that I never realized were or could potentially be toxic. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much of like, a neat freak and just controlling yeah. and just ha like I want things in order mm -hmm. and I never realized how crazy that is. Is he complete opposite? <laughs> to course. a degree. Of course, okay. So it's like there's certain things that just I kept overlooking and I'm just like, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? You yeah. just because I feel like in the beginning, you're tallying stuff up yeah, and you're keeping it to yourself. Exactly. And then you're like, let him do that one more game. And then boom, it's a, it's a problem. And then for me, I feel like in the beginning, I. I People are still shy. You're just a little uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, yeah. You don't want to just, you Best know, behavior. show the yeah. wow right <laughs> Not away. The crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do that right okay. away. But that's, I think, that's where the problem starts from because it starts building up yeah. and then building up and and then eventually and here comes the first exactly. fight. Exactly. And then it's what? Mm -hmm. Who? So, yeah. So for me, it was that. I think it was just we came from two different worlds. Yeah. I came from I was sheltered, lived under my parents' roof. You know, alhamdulillah, like, yeah, I was independent to a degree, but in terms of, like, my home and, like, you know, food, yeah. those things were managed by my parents. Everything yeah. else was, you know, I took care of it. Mm -hmm. And then him, he lived alone. He was paying he bills. Was Mr. Independent. Yeah, independent. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that bachelor lifestyle also yeah. comes with, I don't know, I just feel like the things that I feel like our, our moms teach us, like, you know, laundry, the basics, yeah. they may not know. Yeah. Or I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It was like when I moved in, that was the major shock factor for me. It okay. was like two different polar opposites yeah, coming together. Coming together, yeah. And then finding a way to navigate. To navigate the, yeah, that was the hardest thing for me. Mm -hmm. It was like swallowing my pride. Yeah. And just, you And know, realizing it's not your way anymore. Yeah. And it's not his way anymore. Exactly. Now you guys have to find a oh, way yeah. that mm -hmm. works for the both of you. Mm -hmm. But how do people get there is the yeah. question of the year.